Okay, so here we are in the living room or the parlor. Some people might have called it in an earlier time. So, Captain Walker on duty. Looks like the North Atlantic. It's a room uh, filled with wonderful things. Outstanding collection. I suppose one way to put it is that a typical average antique collector would die happy if they had just uh, what's in this one room alone. We'll start uh, with this wall in the living room parlor. And we might as well start with this wonderful low boy. Okay, let's just keep right on going to the uh, the candlesticks and, and the porcelain. Um, the candlesticks date to about 1750 and they have separate uh, bow bed, and they're in fine condition, and unusually tall, and a fine design, English. And do you want to go to the mirror? Sure. The mirror is a Queen Anne style with the Phoenix bird, and it's totally original, no repair. And um, I guess you'd say it was an important sign. And it's uh, original and are, it's untouched and it's mahogany in the mirror. Outstanding. A beautiful piece. Uh, to it we have this uh, card table belongs to uh, Captain Walker. It's B Mahogany American. Oh, it's, uh, is it? Yeah, we'll check that. Yeah. From here, it seems it seems to uh, be the uh, lighter mahogany, is not the dark mahogany. But in fact, some of it I'm looking at on the veneer looks like almost a flame green. It? Mm -hmm. But anyhow, now we go to the tall case uh, clock. Uh, um, that's the maker is Nathan Hale of Windsor, Vermont. Uh, has the pierced fretwork and brass urn finial and a molded door. It's cherry and it, I would say it has um, very, quite old refinishing and OG bracket feet and it's uh, approximately 1790 the date. Yeah, let's see, now remind me, what is it you uh, Call on the uh, the the metal embellishments. Uh, um, oh well. Oh well. I, I can't. can't I can't remember I can't, either. I can't remember what they are. That's uh, that's uh, especially nice. Yeah. That's kind of what would you call that? A dental molding around. Uh, the skirt. Oh, this uh, scallop molding, I forgot about Scallop that, molding, which sure. Which is a nice mm -hmm. feature. And it has, of course, the quarter columns, the carved quarter columns. And uh, the mysterious brass. You know, that uh, must have got a tight shot of the front work. The uh, finials, are the, uh, did you say the finials are original? Or? Yes, they are. There's one, uh, one little uh, upright piece that's a replacement. Outstanding. That's a cute pair of chairs. Even if they aren't of the period, they're nice. Well, now we'll go over to the fireplace area and 
Well, well. Now let's uh, let's start with this uh, candle stand. Oh, it's a nice candlestick too. Candle stand. It's unusual for the shaped top, the vigorous pedestal, and the well-designed tripod base. It's in its original surface, and I'm not sure of the wood because it has what appears to be an old brown wash. But it, it's one of my favorite things. It's a nicely shaped, unusual shaping of the top. Probably uh, 1790. Mm-hmm, I would think so. Yeah. Nice, nice theorem. Uh, New England theorem, uh, yeah. I presume? Mm -hmm. probably 1840, period. And what's, th what's the box? The box is uh, continental, but uh, they were brought over by the Pennsylvania German settlers. Yeah, many of, many of these Pennsylvania Dutch things were, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Okay, now about the uh, fireplace equipment. Oh, they're uh, period knife blade and irons with brass urinfinials and a tall American fender with brass and an interesting bellows with original decoration. Philadelphia uh, table um, with the bird cage uh, support. I guess it's turn it off a minute while I get my brain. Dish top and it's walnut. Uh, it's Philadelphia and it's probably dates to around 1780. Pretty much original condition. Seems to have nice uh, pads. Mm -hmm. Okay, tell me about the uh, wing chair. Uh, the wing chair is an American Hepplewhite wing chair. Uh, if the rear legs have had, uh, where it used to have casters, has had about two inches restored mm -hmm. in the back. Okay, and next I guess we will just go over to the secretary. All right, that's in Cherry secretary with a dental uh, cornice, uh, scallop panel doors, uh, oxbow shaped base with OG feet. Uh, it has an interesting lid. It was a country piece and the cabinet maker decided to embellish the lid to not entirely successfully. And that, I would say, is in whole refinishing. And I don't, I'm not sure about the brass. Now yeah, let's take a look at the shell. Mm -hmm. It's a country shell, you'd have to say. Nice scalloped pigeonholes. Indeed. And the chair that's uh, with it. Uh. Well, this is an interesting Pennsylvania uh, country Chippendale side chair with a shell, and it's had came with its original seat with with original upholstery, which is now in the Wadsworth Athenaeum on display. Oh. Get that back. I see. Yeah, I I did see that when we were at the Wadsworth, but I didn't realize that it had come from this chair. Mm -hmm. Windsor armchair with carved ears and um, blunt arrow feet. It dates to about 1780. No restoration. Um, it was probably re painted originally, but is now an old repainting. Next, we have in this grouping three outstanding tables. 
So let's have a closer look at them. What did you call the cross stretchers? Uh, the cross stretchers are pierced cross stretchers. Pierced shaped cross stretchers, you could say. And the table is Chippendale with chamfered leg, a serpentine top, and a drawer with, I think, a replaced brass, actually. Probably 1780. Don't you think? It's a uh, birch porringer top tea table uh, with straight, uh, straight, simple leg. Uh, that's about all that there is to say about it. It's a nice country piece. Yep, very, very unusual shaped top for a country piece. Table with serpentine leaves and a nice cut-out skirt and tapered legs and probably about 1790. Good condition, old refinishment. And tell me about the box collection. Well, that's a collection of painted boxes that come from Germany or Bavaria that were brought over by the Pennsylvania Dutch settlers in many cases. It's a nice Queen Anne candlestick. Mm -hmm. A pair of small primitive American portraits on board of her brother and sister and aged 17 and 18 and they're dated um, 1832 on the back. And I think they're original painted, they are original painted frames. But no restoration. Here we are in the dining room. Which features a uh, wonderful collection of painted country thing. Some painted decorated. Some grain painted. All of it uh, surrounded by just this marvelous mural, folk art painting. Makes a nice uh, setting for an interesting country collection. side table and the chief thing about that is it has a shaped top and a shaped skirt. Um, the candlesticks are pewter uh, Cincinnati made by Salou and but it's a very interesting mirror above which is uh, has a carved heart and the date of 1799 and that came from John Wong. Heavy duty Provenance. Uh, Pennsylvania. We have the painted corner cupboard. It's a nice small size and it has original red paint over poplar. And it has a, a little molding, which probably means it's a little bit later than just the Chippendale period, probably more like 1820. Um, and it's all original, I would say. And inside there's some spatter collection, some unusual pieces. An outstanding collection of spatter. Oh, and one thing here, the, this little pair of um, Schimmel roosters. Uh, Schimmel carved them are around 1890, and these are in nice original condition. <coughs> That spatter collection at auction would really, would really bring in big bucks, wouldn't it? Well, some of the rarer pieces are, have gotten quite valuable now. I would think so. Okay, well, what happens down below then? Oh, there's some John Bell pottery down here that is rather unusual. 
particularly this jar, uh, it's, uh, has his name on it, but it's, uh, it's a, just a canning jar, but it's very unusual to have the bird and the tulips and the flowers. I just don't have to put it out. And this green piece he made, and he also made this green flower pot with his stamp on it, which is rather rare. The collection you have down below there stored away would uh, make a, a stellar collection for a lot of people. And then we have the table. It's a Sheraton uh, drop leaf table from Maine. Uh, the unusual part of it is the green vinegar grain and the breadboard top. Uh, and, uh, it's a pretty much original condition. And the chairs are uh, Windsor chairs. With, uh, on the crest, there's a basket of fruit and um, the red striping. And the uh, yellow chairs are kind of hard to come by. Yeah, the yellow is very nice. Okay, um, then we have a uh, step back cupboard. It's, uh, it's a wall covered, found in Worcester, Ohio, probably made by the Amish, and it has its very vivid red paint still there, and it's totally original, probably dates about uh, 1870. It's a nice small size. And it has a little, what would you call them, candle boxes on the side? Oh, the candle drawers. It's a nice, a nice color in this present condition. And let's see, just significant collection up above or just miscellaneous? Well, that's Lou's very fine English porcelain, uh, mostly 18th century. Uh, yeah, seeing some figures back there. Looking at the uh, downstairs bathroom, and intriguing little collections here. The uh, graduated uh, sets of uh, shaker boxes. Marvelous uh, color combinations. The painted uh, shaker boxes, uh, each individual pieces, become extremely valuable and then uh, complete graduated set like this in, in good color is just um, and you put it up at auction and just see what happens uh, it's, it's hard to uh, know where the bidding would stop on something like that it might stop at 8,000 or it might not stop until 25,000 who knows that's a collection of little decorated banks Ten. These have become very popular. Difficult to find. You can go for a couple of years prowling through antique shows and not find one. Uh, a collection like that is very nice. Now, oh, Ellie, uh, tell me about this unusual mirror. Oh, that's a courting mirror in its original box. And they were brought over from the Orient by the sailors to give to their sweethearts. And uh, it's in good condition. Original reverse painting on glass decorated around the top and the sides. And the mirror is held in with pegs, wooden pegs. Okay, next one. You have a nice collection of fructors here. Let's see if I can get them on the camera. There again, you have a better collection of fructors in your bathroom than most people have in their keeping room. Mm -hmm. 
But th this is a, 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 a called a Borschrift, which is a writing sample that the teachers gave the students to copy. And it uh, has an early date of 1784. Uh, the other little pieces are book plates or rewards of merit. Um, this one's dated 1810, this one's 1798, and that's just a little pretty carnation that's not dated. And the, um, the roses, uh, it's just a Pennsylvania watercolor, and it's uh, signed by the artist, I suppose. These are, re these are very old reproductions. Very decorative. They are dutchy looking. Yes, that's right. You're le learning something. But not much. <laughs> and then we have the keeping room, which is done in the later edition. The room is set up with a typical concept of the New England keeping room in which the intimate daily living is done adjacent to the cooking. In fact, most aspects of daily life can focus on the keeping room. The difference uh, here mainly is that it uh, House is a fabulous uh, collection of Pennsylvania and New England antiques. Now, oh, tell me about the chest. Um, I believe it's Lebanon County um, with the pinwheel decoration and the three drawers, the little recess drawers, unusual, and the dental molding, I think, is the only one I've ever seen that, that with that feature. And it came from Ginsburg and Levy's in the 1950s. They had it down in their basement with their uh, country things. And it's in good original condition there's somewhere on the top but uh, original brass and uh, the OG feet okay that's a beautiful uh, beautiful condition that um that again, that one would be on the at an auction. That would be on the cover of the program, wouldn't it? Could be in Pennsylvania. Even in New York. How about where it's illustrated? Oh yes, it's illustrated in Monroe Fabian's book on the Pennsylvania German uh, decorated chess. And he Monroe's been kind enough to write an inscription saying it's one of his all-time favorites. Oh, well, very nice. I've lost the picture with it. I know you were trying to give it to me. And, uh, oh, dear. <laughs> I can't find it. A miniature uh, cupboard with um, original green paint and painted decoration. And um, it's all original, probably made by some grandfather for his child. And it, I guess you'd call it empire, probably. Um, um, I'm not sure how old, what do you think, 1860, something like that? No, later. Maybe 50 or 40. 
1850 or 40. Yeah, it really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Huh? Wonderful little piece. Now, okay, now let's talk about the uh, chalk cat. Oh, the chalk cat. Uh, he's a solid one, uh, not quite as rare as the uh, hollow ones, but he's got, he's nice and has original paint and that's an important size. That's a, and a nice decorative little lamp. We could call that a Nancy Poo lamp. <laughs> I don't know. It has a, probably wouldn't do that again, but it has an old wallpaper box for a shade and a candle mold for a base. But anyway, should we go on to these? Yeah, let's go on to the painted the tin. Small, uh, what? Mm -hmm. The small um, pieces on the wall are. Um, book plates uh, and rewards of merit. Uh, these two are dated 1800 and 1801, and uh, this one's 1834. And this is a very unusual piece with the two roosters, and it came from an important collection in Pennsylvania, the James Pennypacker collection. That is a resounding name in Pennsylvania. Okay, yeah, let's go to the decorated tin then. It's um, a collection of painted tin or tollware, and most of it's in quite good condition. Uh, the little blue tea cat is rare because it's blue and has a bird. And these are tea caddies, and the sugar bowl is especially nice because it's in wonderful condition. And the little cup, the little pieces are always hard to come by because they tended to get all framed up. And then there's a coffee pot, and this is, which is which? Which is coffee and which is tea? I can't, I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. And the night, and these are uh, mugs. Yeah, you'd call that a uh, gooseneck uh, coffee pot, right? Yes, you would. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nice collection. These three uh, bor uh, these are two borscht ribs and one, uh, well this is a small printed one too, but uh, these are, were done by a well-known Proctor artist that we only know by the name of Air Vater because he always started out saying Air Vater, the father, father and mother. And um, they're uh, fine examples of Proctor, late 18th century, and very distinctive decoration that uh, only this artist used. Okay. Gorgeous. And then it's the same, it's the, uh, the same artist on the uh, one to the right? Uh, yes, these all three are the same artist. Okay. Now let's just have a closer look at this one on the right. It's a barber pole decoration. I had uh, never, uh, never been aware that there was such a decoration. But, uh, he uses uh, these same little parrots up here. He used in this one big parrot here. Same, the same bird, different size. Okay, well. Yeah. These little pieces are Lane Ware, L E H N, what's his name? Joseph Lane did them, and uh, they were saffron cups, and they have the original um, strawberry and rose decoration. Typical of this one. Very nice. And this little piece um, is really just. Uh, Outstanding for its kind of decoration, and it came from the Salem Hodge. Uh, this, and also the sconce came from George Salem And this skewer holder with the unusual heart shape also came from the Salem Hodge. And it has its original skewers for roasting little birds. And uh, 
This is a Pennsylvania piece too. It's called a Kindle holder for kindling. It's an unusual tin piece with a heart and a swastika. Oh, that'll be a nice little child's chair down below. Oh, yes, that's a nice little child's chair. And the wear comes from when the child used it for a walker and just slid it around along the floor. Oh, but of course. Yeah, that's a nice little seat. Original seat. Yeah, let's see, while well, we have the camera on our country painted table. This one? Mm hmm. Might as well. This little stretcher based New England table. Uh, I would say probably about 1750. And it's had a various finishes over its lifespan. But it's chiefly, the chief claim to fame is its nice proportions and early turning. Can you get this one from here? It's a Pennsylvania piece and it has. The typical Pennsylvania construction with the cleats underneath, and uh, it belonged to Mary Thornton, who was a well-known dealer and collector in Ohio. Uh, Tell this, me about the cupboard. Uh, this Dutch cupboard uh, is walnut, uh, with the three drawers and the turn feet. It's probably was made around 1840 or 50, and it came from uh, the Samohas. Uh, it originally belonged to the Lane family and of Joseph Lane who did the decorated, little decorated pieces. It has a uh, blue interior. And um, the rest of the spatter collection. The uh, most unusual probably piece here is the uh, big platter with the unusual tulip and the um, yellow pieces. The yellow is always the rarest color in the spatter. And this little egg cup, which is possibly unique. It's not another one. Okay? You probably have one of the better spatter collections in the country, wouldn't you think? Well, Photograph the Bellamy Eagle. That was uh, one of John Bellamy's uh, eagles. I think he's a New England carpenter, uh, carver. Right, Maine. Maine, that's right. He's from Maine. It's, um, I think, never, the wings were never painted, just the, the banner and the, and the eye. I think that's the way it was made. You probably have the only Bellamy Eagle in your neighborhood. That could be. A uh, chair table and with two fan back Windsors and a hoop back Windsor. It's a nice uh, grouping. Nice uh, place around formal dining next to the garden. Memorial secretary. <laughs> the little New England secretary with the original painted decoration. Um, shelves above and the little desk area here. And a little ch uh, chair, I think is Canadian, a little ladder back chair with the useful height to sit at this tall desk. And the proctor is um, Center County artist and uh, it 
one of a series that he did. Some of them have the wine bottle on the table, and some uh, the, the man is giving the woman a bouquet of flowers, but it's a well-known artist. Actually, this one appeared on the cover of Antiques Magazine for May of 1923. Oh, and I hope we have a copy of that edition. We'll have, copy of we'll have to find you one. Yeah. The Lancaster County, Lancaster, Pennsylvania County, um, Windsor side chair, very unique form with the blood arrow feet, original paint, and it was bought from Joe Kindig, who is a famous York, Pennsylvania dealer. Very nice. This decorated box comes from Pennsylvania, and it's dated inside 1850. It has unusual decoration. I guess you'd call it compass decoration. The Serpentine card table has original red paint and it's probably about 1780 replaced hardware. Unusual wrought iron um, candlestick with this nice little handle. And the theorem is a New England uh, theorem of fruit and flowers on velvet and it's an early one, probably 1830, 20 to 30, and a wonderful um, paint decorated frame. Okay, here we have one of our prizes. What have we here? Uh, it's a salt box. It's called, uh, it was made by a man named Samuel Plank, who lived in Allensville, Pennsylvania, in Mifflin County, which is an Amish area. And on the back it says, uh, manufactured by S.L. Plank, three miles southeast of Allensville, price $1.25, presented to Jacob and Lydia by father and mother. And then in, it says number 39. Well, very pricey wedding gift now. <laughs> Pennsylvania card bird, uh, a painted decoration, one like it in Abbey Aldrich Rockefeller collection. And this little redware dish with the E as um, a typical redware piece with a cobbled edge and a slip decoration. Oops. This uh, box is called a Weber box. Weber was the uh, decorator. And it's typical of his work that there would be a little house painted on it somewhere. It has a tulip on the top, initials L, W and some floral decoration on a dark green background. Uh, the animals and birds are chalk, except for this one, which is a little carved rooster, possibly continental. Okay. Nice little museum there. It's a Pennsylvania long rifle uh, made by George Schroyer of Lancaster, Pennsylvania in the 1780s. And it has a, a simple patch box. And on the other side, it has relief carving. Uh, it's uh, a flint lock, I guess you call it. Oh, flint lock, curly, uh, curly maple curly stock, maple. which was yes. the uh, preferred wood for the long rifle. Brass, uh, brass butt, uh, shoulder butt. It's a, it's a superior example. And then behind it we have the 
the cheese drainer, which is a nice example. I haven't seen one of those sold for a couple of years. Hmm? Yeah, and it's written in English, and it's signed by George Walter, and the date of 1825. It has nice parrots and birds and tulips and a little geometric design. Came from Nicely. What would you call that uh, heart uh, pinwheel? Well, four, four hearts uh, in a pinwheel design. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Outstanding example. From the Sakon collection. Okay, then we have and then this, this little stool. stool I've always been very fond of because of the Pennsylvania decoration, and it's, it was signed by the maker 1836, which is nice to have the documentation. Gorgeous. And then this ladder back chair is typically early Pennsylvania, it has its original blue paint, what's left of it, the original seat, not a great, wonderful turning here and uh, nice finials and typical style, uh, probably 1750. And it's a beauty. Well, that, I think that doesn't accept that for the pie safe. It's a cherry pie safe. And um, the horse uh, punch tin work is a little usual, unusual because of the design, not usually a geometric. Very unusual. Not sure of the origin. Probably Pennsylvania. I would think so. Uh, it might be Ohio, you know. Could be. Mm -hmm. Examples that good were also done in Ohio. And the same, uh, three three of the same panels on the either side. Then on the ends, too. <laughs> right. Right. And Turned, turned feet and turned legs. Okay, now you don't happen to have about a thirty, forty thousand dollar collection of something inside there. No, it's just groceries. Okay, you have been hiding expensive collections. All right, tell me about the stoneware. Well, um, these were all made by whites in Utica, New York, and I just always like the white birds. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice figures. Definitely adds a lot of value as compared to just a little squiggly flower or something. Okay, and now we have this fructor. Uh, this this um, birth certificate or, or borscht shrift was uh, made by a man named Spire, and he liked to copy the other Fractor artists. And uh, the main thing about this is that although it's a printed form, the decoration is done by hand, and the colors are very vivid. And it's always hard to find Fractors with the human form. Yep, unusual. Unusually nice. Um, and this is 
the artist is Daniel Peterman, and he signed his name down here, and he was from York County, Pennsylvania, and the, it's amusing because the ladies have purses. One has a purse, one's holding a bird, and they have flowers, and then there are birds, and then there's an angel up here with a harp, and justice here with the scales. A little bit of everything. Wonderful. <laughs> Okay, and then we have this green painted chest. Mm -hmm. uh, the feet are strictly an invention of a country cabinet maker who tried, yeah, who tried to be elegant. And I bought it for $35 from a porch in North Canton a long time ago. Great. Okay, now, great, uh, great small slant front desk. Bandy legs and where is this from? Uh, I I've never seen shells like that on uh, on the drawer. I'm not really sure. I always thought it was Connecticut. I bought it from Israel Sack in the um, in the fifties, and uh, it's been refinished. It has this, um, I believe it's an amphitheater interior. Mm hmm And it has the little drawers and document drawers. And a, just a simple lid. Most of the brasses are original. That's a nice one. Let's see, that's what, 36 inches? Yeah, about? 36 inches. Yeah, that's... Ideal, ideal size for a slant front. Now let's see, it's while we're there, the portrait above, uh, what's that about? I don't know much about it. I bought it in Salem, Massachusetts um, a long time ago, and I think it has some restoration. But she has a sweet face. Mm-hmm. Blue dress. Yeah, it's what a marvelous box collection on top. Yes, we a high boy. We have ball and claw feet, drop pendants, two shells, open hatching shells, nice simple cornice that would tend to indicate a little earlier piece, a little earlier in the. Chippendale period. Uh, let's see, from here that seems to be cherry, right? Yes, it, it, it's cherry, and it's stamped on the top and in the back, I Tucker. It was a Hartford, Connecticut maker. Mm hmm. Well, it is a nice one. Is that a, a hat maker stand? Uh, it's a, a shop or a wig stand or a wig stand. Mm -hmm. And the, the boxes are were used to store uh, trinkets and bonnets. Uh, yeah, it's a uh, but it, they were made in uh, the 1820s and 30s. Okay, I'm over on the scene of the portrait. It seems to be a watercolor, right? There's a watercolor of a little girl, and an early one, I think, maybe in 1810, uh, in her blue dress. And then above it is a valentine. It was cut out work done by a man named Faber, F-A-B-E-R, and it was a valentine. You can see by the hearts and the... It's typical of his work. Schnitzel? Mm -hmm. Sure, and Schnitz. Actually, with the, with the bird, and it's an early uh, Queen Anne. 
very special little yellow table that I bought from George Samaha a long time ago. It's from Maine, and it has really the best decoration, I think, of, of any yellow piece I've ever seen. It's just, uh, has original brass, and it has this funny decoration down the leg, and it's just nice striping on the top. It is gorgeous. And, uh, you see a number of yellow dressing tables, but for some reason or other, these uh, small stands you don't see as many of. And then the chair is a similar piece. I don't know where that's from. I bought it in Ohio, but it, I'm sure it's a New England um, Windsor. Yeah, that matches up well. Now let's see the little mirror above. Uh, that's oh, that's different. a little courting mirror. Mm -hmm. chest. Um, it's about uh, 36 inches. Uh, I think it's original blue paint. It's a lift top chest, which commonly called a mule chest, with two fake drawers over three real ones. Mm -hmm. From New Hampshire. Great color. Thank you. That's a Unusual shirt on mirror above. Mm -hmm. That's the um, reverse painting on top. Pilasters. And then don't overlook the um, Hattie Bruner watercolor. Oh, uh, yes, the Hattie Bruner watercolor. Hattie Bruner uh, did this in 1977, I believe. 76. A nice snow scene. She's a Pennsylvania contemporary artist. Mm -hmm. Sort of a latter day Grandma Moses. Yeah, it's not contemporary anymore. She's been gone for a while. Art no. uh, corner. Let's, why don't we start with the uh, brides boxes? All right. Uh, these are in the Pennsylvania. Tradition um, has the bride and groom pictured on the front, but they were probably made in uh, Germany and brought to this country. And this one with the, all the tulips on it uh, could be either uh, Pennsylvania or German. Yeah, but this little box is very early and it's American. It has a heart and nail heads and initials and then very unusual hearts on the side as a part of the, of the, of the laps of the box and it's a hand carved box. Beautiful. And this is my only family heirloom my, from my great grandmother, great grandfather rather, who made it when he was in the seafaring business. Yeah, let's see, then we have a, this is a mule chest, I trust. Oh, excuse me. Yes, um, it's a, an original green paint, the lift top, and the two little drawers, the one long drawer, and the bracket feet. Mushroom pulls. Mushroom pulls, very good. And then over behind the chest here, we have the bed warmer. Bed warmer with a painted handle. And the child's chair had a lot of coats of paint, but it's signed G. Dewey, and he's the only known Litchfield, Connecticut, Windsor chairmaker. Uh huh. How nice. No kid's going to play around with that. <laughs> and uh, this is a family piece of uncertain age. Well, certainly of great charm and quality. We have a cherry high chest. Six graduated drawers, bracket.
bracket base with an interesting cutout, uh, original brass, and pretty much original surface. And it came from the Samahas. And it has, I would say, an untouched finish. It's a nice size, 36 inches. Mm-hmm. Very nice size. And good software. <laughs> Hardware and software. Very funny. Uh, this little peanut piece, it's gray green, I guess, with black splotches. Uh, it's Pennsylvania, and the drawer has peg construct construction, which I think is interesting. And, um, I don't know quite how to date it. I suppose it's about 1840. Or earlier. Or earlier, yeah. It's one of those pieces that could have been any time from, from you know, 18, 1820 to 1860. Mm -hmm. That's nice at escape refinishing. Yeah, that's unusual decoration. Okay. And we have, this we'll is, start with the table, yeah. It's kind of a mystery piece. It came out of an uh, early home in Zorro, where all of Zorro, Ohio, where all the rest of the furniture was uh, proved to be Zorro, but we're not sure about this piece. It has unusual construction, unusual decoration, and uh, uh, I suppose it's a late Sheraton piece, about 1840-50. And there's a little miniature, painted miniature chest of drawers, too. Okay. And then this watercolor theorem basket of flowers is uh, um, dated, I think, 1830-something, and it's signed by the artist. This looks like so it's the original frame, it might be. Yes, it might be. Okay, well, let's see. I see a... Another nice blue, bottle blue, uh, painted uh, child's table, drop leaf. It's very nice. Works nicely. It's a side table next to the low poster rope bed. This is uh, the Cynthia Memorial rope bed. <laughs> Bob's Memorial rope bed. Uh, use a nice uh, wagon bench for, to hold the luggage. Lou uh, uses a, a usual nice, uh, I guess one might call it a library table for his computer. Oh, all right. This is a Massachusetts mahogany low boy. Uh, it descended in the Stearns family of Salem, Massachusetts, and was on loan to the uh, Boston Museum of Fine Arts for a number of years. I bought it from John Walton, and he told me at the time it was the best Massachusetts low boy he'd ever had, which you, you know may or may not be the case. It has original brass and a fan carving, original pendants, and a typical Massachusetts leg, and it probably dates around 1740. Mm-hmm. Just gorgeous. And the candlesticks are petal based, uh, English, 1750, with the separate bow bed in nice condition. Uh, this is an English Delft bowl that came from Ginsburg and Levy with a uh, multicolored decoration. And the mirror is a Queen Anne mirror. Uh, this is typically Queen Anne with a Phoenix bird, a nice a large size, and it's a mahogany veneer. Um, it's totally original, no repair. Right, well, tell me about the candle stand. Oh, yes, it, it, this is New Hampshire, for Gilmanton, New Hampshire. Uh, it has most of its red stain. It 
It's a nice octagonal top, and a simple tripod. And the fun part is that it has a label that says it was part of Susan Smith Brooks Wedding Furniture in 1793. Um, I think that'll do it. That's nice. Well. Better, dear. <laughs> And well, we have to, we have to get Lou's favorite piece, the the Sheraton Country Couch. Oh yeah, we forgot the couch. Captain. Oh, yes. Captain Captain Walker is 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 very attached to this. 